I first became interested in cryptography in a mild way in 1968 to 69 when I was at IBM Research and they had just started their own cryptographic research effort. I remember saying sometime around that time, I can see the day potentially when you might buy a loaf of bread with an electronic fund transfer. I couldn't say debit card because we didn't have it. It was an EFT, which were these multi-million dollar transactions. Uh, and what happens if we don't have good security? So it's that kind of uh, thinking that really drew me to work in this issue. My colleagues told me I was crazy to work in cryptography, and uh, they had two very good reasons. One of them was uh, NSA has a humongous budget, uh, the National Security Agency. How can you hope to discover something they don't already know? And if you do anything good, they will classify it, because this was a very sensitive area. And um, in terms of the sensitive area, when we started publishing good work in this area, uh, there were threats that we might be thrown in jail for doing it. Even though I and my colleagues Whit Diffie and Ralph Merkel working in this area, people at other institutions who built on our work like Ravesh Shamir and Adelman at MIT, had had no access to the classified literature, they maintained that this work was born classified. And encryption, the analogy I've used there is, imagine that automobiles had been developed initially in the classified uh, community, and only the law enforcement and only the mili our military had uh, motorized equipment. And then someone invented the automobile independently, externally. And you could see where they'd be really worried. And there's a trade-off between what's the public need to know that information versus what is the uh, cost to society. And so that was the fundamental trade-off, uh, that by giving good encryption to the good guys to protect them from the bad guys, you're also giving good encryption to the bad guys to protect them from the good guys. My model is that the muse the muse of the fools, the muse of cryptography, is promiscuous. And she has to be because almost no one listens to her because it sounds so foolish. Uh, but uh, Ralph and Witt and I were crazy enough to listen to her. <laughs>